Well, it is Monday night and I'm doing a live, a live on the Unstoppable Woman. So tonight is going to be interesting. I'm going to talk to you about, do you want to be an unstoppable woman? So looking forward to it, it should be fun. And let's see how it's going to go. So let us see what they said they're going to, let everybody knows you can always send me a question and ask the questions at the end. And one day we're telling your friends that you will look alive. So let's see what happens. So it's Monday night, it's 7 p.m. And it is the Unstoppable Woman Night. So welcome everybody. And let us see what it is you do and what you want to know about how you can become unstoppable. So you decided you wanted to be unstoppable. Who is going to do that for you? Do you think there's somebody here that is going to make you unstoppable? Do you believe there's somebody here that can make you unstoppable? An unstoppable woman, a woman who is unstoppable is some woman that has certain traits, some of them she came with, some of them were hidden, and those traits she decided to develop them. So tonight, hello Ali, how are you? Tonight we are going to talk about the unstoppable woman because sometimes a woman wants to become unstoppable and if you want to become unstoppable how are you going to do that? I know how because I am the unstoppable woman. I chose to be the unstoppable woman and that was one of the things I decided to do because I wanted to make sure I touched where I wanted to go and what I wanted to be. Yes, I am that woman who takes the bull by the horn. I always take the bull by the horn. I am the unstoppable woman. The woman who decides what her vision of herself is. So she steps into the frame and created who she is today. That's who I am. I am the woman that stopped, stepped into the frame and created who I am today. That's the unstoppable woman. She is a storyteller. She loves to tell stories. The storyteller is the unstoppable woman. The storyteller is the woman who comes to the village and goes from village to village telling the stories. Telling the stories about the tales of the unstoppable woman. And at the end of the legend, she reveals that the unstoppable woman is her. She tells you of the effervescent, vivacious woman. The woman at the end of the legend, she grieves and she says, I am the unstoppable woman. The boisterous, rebellious, enthusiastic, fascinated, and forceful woman who decided that the woman in the mirror did not match the woman inside waiting to be revealed. She knew that. She knew to be unstoppable the woman she saw looking back at the mirror wasn't the woman she wanted to be. Wasn't the woman that she knew that was waiting to be revealed. And that is what all of us women want. We want to be unstoppable. I know how because I created the unstoppable me. I created the woman that is unstoppable. And I can tell you, and you can see the names later on. I can talk all the names of these unstoppable women that came before us on whose shoulders we have the freedom to stand. We can stand on their shoulders and claim our place too. Because these women came before us and showed us how to be unstoppable. I am that woman that decided to do that. I knew then, and I know though, now is that I had to become unstoppable. I had to feel being unstoppable, both emotionally and mentally, and then I said, no, I also need to be unstoppable physically. I said, no, it cannot be mentally and emotionally only. Physically, I had to be unstoppable. I needed to be unstoppable. I chose that. I chose that just because I knew it was the best thing to do. Once that decision was made to be unstoppable, I cultivated an attitude of being passionate, about everything I thought and did and said. 
I became passionate about my actions, my thoughts, and my words. I had to make myself unstoppable. I had to advocate for me, and only for me. I had to stand on my faith, my beliefs, and my convictions. I had no other choice. I had to stand there and see that I am an unstoppable woman. I had no choice. I learned how to become that woman by being observant. I observed others. I looked at them. I studied them. I learned by reading. I searched about topics about women who were determined. I looked and read about these determined, unstoppable women, fervent women, lively women, who were unstoppable. Trailblazers, these women were unstoppable. So I created the lives they, they wanted for themselves. I said, oh yeah? So if they can create that life, I'm going to create that unstoppable life for me. I chose it. I read about them, I studied them, I looked at them, I observed them. And then I chose the life they chose for themselves to be the woman they wanted to be in the life they chose for themselves. So I became that unstoppable woman. So these women are, these women are determined. They're fervent, they're lively women who were unstoppable and they were trailblazers. And they created that amazing life and the life they wanted just for themselves. Then I studied the thinking of men. I had six brothers. And I realized they never asked for permission to do what they wanted to do. No, they wanted to do something, they just jump into it. And this is what men did. So I said, oh yeah? So if that's how the men can do it, I am going to choose to do it too. Of course, there was small pushbacks. But then I said, no, not here, not right now. I'm going to do it because if they can do it, I can do it too. So I took chances. I did the things the men could do. I learned once to drive a caterpillar just for the fun of it. I learned how to hotwire the cars on the plantation because the boys could. I learned how to change my tires because they could. I knew how to drive, to have to drive free wheel coming down from the plantation only on the bricks because they did it. I wanted to do it too. So I had that in me and that woman was burning inside. She wanted to come out, but I was still shy. So. What they want to do, they could do. The fervent women stood their ground and became unstoppable. They were an obsessed bunch of women. They were so obsessed, you know? And <laughs> they created change, first in themselves and then in their surroundings. Marvelous women. Do you want to hear of some of these women? Well, here they are. These are those I chose. There were thousands of women. Some of them, you might not have even heard about them and what they do, they did. There was Mother Teresa. She came from a country and spoke a different language. She went to India and opened an, an orphanage and you know the rest is history. They made her a saint not too long ago. I went to where she had that nursery. That nurse, I went through the orphanage. I stood at her tomb when I was in India. And I looked at it and I felt her energy. And she was so, so tiny. But she was an unstoppable woman. She didn't know no. She didn't understand no. Then there comes Rosa Parks. She refused to give her seat up. She just plain refused to give up her seat. She said, no, no, I'm staying here. She stood her ground. And that was Rosa Parks. Then we have Margaret Thatcher. She changed politics in England. She actually changed the thought of politics in England. She became the Iron Woman. Why? Because she was unstoppable. Maya Angelou. This woman was a poet laureate. She was a civil rights activist. She left books that took our breath away. She wrote her bestseller, Why Will Cage Bird Sings? That's Maya Angelou. All of her books were really bestsellers. Then we have that tiny woman, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, associate judge in the Supreme Court. She stuck her head in there and she stayed and she fought for that. She didn't give up. She didn't even give up. She never retired. She held her seat until she died. Why? 
because she was an unstoppable woman. This is what I studied. This is what I looked at. These were the women I wanted to stand on because they are there already. Then you had Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman, she was a, one of the creators of the Underground Railroad. She carried slaves from the south to the north. She herself was a runaway slave. She had a bounty on her head, but that didn't stop her. She was an unstoppable woman. So you look at Jane Austen, men, women didn't write in those days, but Jane Austen wrote, and look at what she wrote. Look at the books she wrote, look at the love stories, look at the romances, look at the practical books she wrote, Jane Austen. Then you had Marie Curie. Marie Curie won a Nobel Prize together with her husband for physics, the first woman ever to win a Nobel Prize. Can you believe those women? They were unstoppable. They didn't have the freedom we had. None of them did. Then you had Coco Chanel. That's my girl. <laughs> she changed fashion. She made us choose to wear what we wanted to wear. She gave us designs that are still alive today. In 1989, I copied her little Chanel jacket and a skirt, and I can still fit into it, and I created it myself. So that is to show you. And it's red with the black piece and the buttons and the skirt. That was Coco Chanel. She gave us her signature style that is still fashionable today. Now, there you go, Catherine Hepburn, a movie star. You say she didn't do anything, but she did. She changed what women were supposed to wear or to look like. You know what she did? She decided to dress in trousers. She had pants made for her. In those days, women did not wear pants. So she changed how women were supposed to dress. That is what Catherine Hepburn did. So then, you know, then you look at other women that were really amazing. Emmeline Parkhurst. How many people know about Emmeline Parkhurst? We can go to a ballot box today and make an X in the box because she, she was a suffragette. She fought for, to give women the right to vote. That was who she was. Unstoppable woman. Really unstoppable. And then we had Phyllis Whitley. She was the first published black poet in America. She was a woman and a black woman. She was the first ever published poet, black poet in America. And now girls, now, ladies and gentlemen, we have Kamala Harris. She just did it. That gives us an inkling that these were unstoppable women. They did not stop. They chose to fight. So when I, led, I read about these women, I studied them, and of course, there are thousands of others. When you look at Golda Meir of Israel, Indira Gandhi of India, you know, come on, man. These women didn't stop. They didn't let their circumstances stop them. They didn't let their femininity stop them. They didn't let their, where they came from stop them. They didn't let that men, only men did it stop them. They chose to do that. And that is what matters. So I chose to dance. I chose to dance with the music of they created. And I took some of the light to see me. They created music, so I danced during the music. Then I took some of the light that they had and I shined it on me, so I put it over me. Because I wanted to see the unstoppable me more clearly. And in order to do that, I had to look at these women, look at the circumstances. So I danced to their music and I stood in their light and I shone it all over me. I no longer wanted to be shy because as I used to be shy. I didn't want to be reserved. I didn't want to be afraid of speaking up. I no longer wanted to be frightened, and I certainly no longer wanted to be afraid of heights. So I dared myself to become unstoppable. Yes, I did. I chose to be the woman I am today, who embraces her mind, who loves math, has a phenomenal memory, 
enjoys reading historical romances and don't give a damn. Fantasies and who loves murder mysteries and autobiographies. I love reading these books. And who reads a book because it is there? It's not because it is something I should read. It, I read the book because it just happens to be there. So I read insatiably. I don't read for fun. I read to learn. When I read, or when you read, when we all read, wherever the author has been, you can go there. That is what reading does for you. You can read and you go in the mind of that author. You see it through the eyes. And that is the really amazing thing about reading. So what I did, I decided I needed to release my femininity. I needed to let it come out. I decided I'm going to cherish and use my sexuality and become me. Then that me is here to tell you, the only person, the only person who can change and who can make you who you are, or who you plan to be, or you, who you yearn to be, or who you know you should be. And the you with that will have no regret is you. You can become the unstoppable you by deciding what it is you want to be. Who do you want to be? What part of you you want to shine? Can you shine all of you? I chose to shine as much of me as I could. I never stop pushing. I don't know how to quit. I have no idea what failure is like. I try, and if I try, I always succeed. When I try, I do not let go. I don't know what it is to feign weakness. I don't know what it is to cry pain. I will hide it, I will hold it, and I'll go through it. Because I want to be unstoppable. I want to create the person that is deep inside. I want her to pop up. And this is what I can do for most of you. If you are afraid to be unstoppable, just DM me or email me and I'll show you. I'll teach you how to be unstoppable. I will help you to find the person that is inside of you that wants to come out, that wants to be revealed, and no one is letting them out. That is what a, a unstoppable woman did. Look at the names of those women. When, you know, if you look at them carefully, only two or three of them were tall. They were tiny women. But they just didn't let somebody tell them, especially men. And that is what I've studied men. I realized, yes, they don't ask permission. They just do what they want to do. So if you want to be an unstoppable you, you have to choose. You have to decide how and what you can do to be the unstoppable you. And I know that because I decided I wanted to be an unstoppable woman. I wanted to shine in all parts of my life. I chose, as I said to you, I chose to use my mind. I chose, I was ashamed that I was a math whiz. And then I said, no, you can do calculus in your head without a book, so what's your point? It's easy for you, so shine, use it. And that's what I did. Then I realized, oh, you are an attractive woman. So I began to use my sexuality. And that is as simple as it is. So if you know what you want and you want to be unstoppable, then use all what you've got. The man does not choose to be unstoppable by hiding part of him. He comes out with all guns blaring and they don't ask permission to be who they want to be. But we, they want us to choose to be who we want to be from them, to get direction from others. So if somebody does not like you, when you start to shine and become the unstoppable you, then it's time for you to wave them goodbye. People's opinion should have no effect on how you conduct your life. Because unstoppable women did not do that. You remember their names? Mother Teresa was tiny. She couldn't speak Hindi, but she ended up from Croatia to, to India. Maya Angelou spoke. She was an activist. Harriet Tubman was a, a slave leader, pushing people away, hiding them. You know? And look at all the others. Margaret Thatcher decided she could take on the men. She did, and she won. She changed the color of politics all over the world. And you know what they called her? The Iron Lady. 
So look at what Catherine Hepburn did. She decided, it's ridiculous. We cannot wear pants. I am in a sailboat. I go sailing. I need pants. And she changed women's style. Coco Chanel. So you know what? What do you want? What is holding you from being the unstoppable you? Do you know? Have you sat down and thought, what is it I am holding back for? So don't be afraid to shine the light on what is the best parts of you. And decide if you don't like what you consider the worst parts of you, then change it. But love what you can do. Cherish yourself and learn to be the unstoppable woman within. So what do you have to say? Hello, people. No questions? Okay, that's fine. So, did you enjoy it? Let me know if you enjoyed the talk. I'm staying here until somebody speaks. <laughs> Not really. So I hope you enjoyed the talk tonight on becoming an unstoppable woman. And if you have any doubt and you want anybody to coach you or to just even to help you to become the unstoppable you, just, you know, DM me, email me, and I'll just give you some tips because I did it for myself. I used to be shy, I told you. I used to be afraid of things. I didn't always speak up. But then I decided if I wanted to do what I wanted to do, I would have to take things in my own hand and become the unstoppable me. And I stood on the shoulders of these women. I took their dance and I danced to the tune. Then I took their light and I shone it on me. So what one of, what one of the people you spoke about, which one resonates with you the most? You know, maybe the one that I, I resonate the most with is Maya Angelou. I like, I like that she was strong. She had various careers. Um, she loved life. She, and she spoke with such dignity and poise. And when she read a book or she had things and her, and her quotes are very strong and life changing. So I really like that. We're not done with you. Lots of questions are coming for you. You're not living yet. Hello, hello. Thank you. Yeah, so she was good. Margaret Thatcher I liked because they had to get a name for her. They had to call her the Iron Lady. And she was fighting against all these men. So when somebody gives you a name like that, they call you the Iron Lady. Don't shine. Don't say, take it and tell them thank you. Because that knows that you know now that they respect you. So tiny women, they, could, they had to kill in Dera Gandhi. They couldn't get rid of her, so they had to murder her. So that's what it is. When you're too strong, they destroy to destroy to destroy you. And that's one of the things about those things. So that is what you have to learn when you're looking at life, is that who do you want, how do you want to be? Do you want to be that unstoppable woman? If you do, then what can you do? Like, you know, I, when I go over these names of these amazing women, and when I tell you that I was shy, you must have said, and when I say that I love to read um, <laughs> historical romances, I love fantasies, I love murder mysteries, I love autobiographies. I read these books purposely. And then I look for books that are just hanging around, and I'll just read them just because they're there. So. That is what the storyteller does. She chooses things to do. And a woman will always do that. What was the number one obstacle you had to overcome that was holding you back, was stopping you from moving forward? In, in, in the career, they were afraid of me. I became an enigma. They didn't know what to do with me, especially at the bank. They couldn't fire me because of, that's what they would love to do. They, could, they couldn't say my work wasn't good because I, I, I was actually, I did phenomenal work. So they couldn't do that. So they, because of that, they almost handled me like an egg. They, they didn't know what I would come up with. They didn't know what they would say to me that that would do. So in, in some cases, they promoted me to get me from doing what I was doing. <laughs> so, and they thought if we promoted her, then she'd have to do what we want. But I found a way around it. What's the number one mindset of skills set that someone needs to have in order to be unstoppable? Know yourself. Know who you are. And never doubt who you know you are. Don't let anybody tell you who you are. 
Don't, don't let anybody tell you that you're less than you are. Know yourself. Actually, know yourself. And believe that you know yourself. And know one thing for sure. People's opinion has no effect on your life whatsoever unless you allow it to. So if you know who you are, that's it. How did you overcome your shyness to become who you are? <laughs> I chose to work on it. I chose shyness. Well, you know how I, I love shyness? When I read Coco Chanel's book, I, I read about how she started and who she was. I read her, her biography. That helped me. And then I read Maya Angelou's book where she, she didn't speak for seven years after she was raped. Seven years. But then she sang. Then the cage bird sang. But she used those seven years to educate herself. So you cannot move away from shyness unless you are well prepared. Unless you are well versed. Unless you know things. You have to have to fight shyness, you have to have a wide range of, of, of knowings. Knowings mean you have to listen to a certain portion of the news. You have to know what's going on around you in the city you live. You have to be well read. You have to, you have, to have a mindset. You have to know when to go forward, when to pull. So to be shy, I had to stand and figure this out. Wow, she was, yes, she didn't know that, yes. Um, by her mother's step husband, boyfriend, whatever. So, and she didn't sing or talk for, she didn't talk for seven years. And then she goes to So, this is, these are the things you learn. You have to, if she could be quiet and not talk, and you can talk, why are you quiet? Why are you shy? So, you have to choose those things. You have to make that cage bird sing. You have to open up. You have to educate yourself. And you don't need to go to school all the time. You have to read and you have to listen and observe. And that's how you do. Observe these women. Read about them. Learn about them. You know. Oh my, Ali, it's four o'clock in the morning. I am so sorry that you're hanging on there still. I really admire your dedication. Thank you. <laughs> so that is one of the most amazing nights I had. I enjoyed preparing this one. So um, I got a lot of comments about the notification. Some people said it was a little bit over <laughs> and enjoyable. Most people used the word sexy. That was interesting because it looked like I felt it. But I'm always like that. that as I said in the, in the talk, I embrace my sexuality. That is something I've never shied away from. I, I embrace my learnings. I embrace what I'm good at. And I embrace my brain and my mouth and my love for so many things. So that's it. Stay awake. <laughs> Go to sleep. So yeah, so that was an amazing chat. And I'm so happy everybody came and enjoyed themselves. Susie and Nikki and Ali and Donato and Patrick and... Susie, embrace your sexuality. You like that, Susie? I know you will. I know. Embrace your sexuality. Did you? You were really there for that part. It was the funniest part ever. But, um, yeah, it's, you have to. You cannot let people take that away from you. If you do, then you will never get it back. So, Ali, thank you and have a wonderful night in India. <laughs> oh, I'm sitting in India or in Iran. So, anyway, take care. So, release your femininity. And you know, so um, let me see, Susie. So I released my feminine side. I cherished my sexuality, and I became me. The me that is here to tell you, you are the only person that can change you. You only, you are the only person that can wake up and be unstoppable. Nobody will be unstoppable for you, and nobody can make you unstoppable. So you have to do it yourself, and they can't stop you from being unstoppable. So that's what it is. So if it takes all that of you to put it together, it's a complete package, right? There isn't half of you. There isn't a little bit from here. It's all that makes you what you are, that you have to show up and throw it at them. And if they don't know what to do, like they didn't know what to do with me at the bank, they, I know they referred to me as an enigma. They had no idea what to do. Because I wouldn't let them stop 
when they wanted me to take a cell phone, I told them when my high heels leave the pavement and it gets into my car, I no longer work for them. So, um, love your, your pants. Oh, you like them? <laughs> they're funny pants. And so, oh, they're not tight. They just slide on. They're great pants. I didn't make those, though. I got those from one of my daughters for Christmas. The top I made. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful night. And Donado, thank you. How do you love the cold shop? <laughs> That's okay. We'll talk about that another day. Yes, I do. I do love my cold showers. I'm getting better at accepting them. Um, what else did I tell you? Did I tell you anything else? Anyway, I just love life, guys. So anyway, if you want to learn how to do this, how to be unstoppable and don't give anything about anybody and what they think of you stand up on the shoulders of these women because if these women had stopped to think of what people thought of them many of us would not be standing here today and most certainly Kamala Harris and Indira Gandhi, Golden Meyer and Margaret Thatcher would not have been leaders of their country. And that one in, in New Zealand, whatever her name is, she is a force. She's tiny and she's determined and she puts them in their places. I love her. So they're that prime minister of New Zealand. So that's what you have to be. You are going to make waves. You are going to shape people. People are going not to like you. People are going not to like you because you're tall. They're not going to like you because you, like people still tell me I'm too much. You'd always dress up. But I was born that way. I'm Lady Gaga. I was born to dress up. Why else would they give me those long legs? Just explain that to me. So people will always find faults with you. And if you take it and you put it around your neck, it's going to choke you. It will be your albatross, not theirs. They cannot affect you. They cannot affect you. They don't give you permission to turn on your stove to cook your dinner. They have nothing to do with that. And if they don't give you the check to pay your mortgage or your rent, why take them on? If you want to be bold, be bold. I am not letting anybody, nobody stop me. I don't care who they are, where they come from. As long as they step on my toe, I'm going to say, hey, get off. I am not taking a squeeze from anybody and going home with it. So if you, want, if you want to be unstoppable, listen to what I have to say because I teach people to be unstoppable. You want something, you study it. You want to do something, you, you look at it. You absorb it, you must taste it, you must feel it. Let me tell you, the emotions you feel for, for somebody, for love, for anything, is the same emotion you feel when you want to succeed. That same emotion, you have to go down there and get it. And when you get it and you bring it up and you bring it to the service, it becomes yours. So it's not a different emotion for success and a different emotion for love. It's the same thing. Because what it is, you must love what you want to succeed at. You must do it every day with passion. You must stand up on it and you have to believe if you want to do it, fine. If 10,000 people are doing it, that's fine too because there is enough to go around. Don't be afraid of the person that does the same thing that you do. All you have to do is raise your bar, raise your standard. And I, I knew that and I look at um, some shows purposely just to see what they do. And I was looking at a, a show from buying houses in Dubai show. But when they mentioned that some expensive rich man from Dubai was going to be on the show and they were going to work with one of his buildings, I made sure I watched the show. And one of the things he did, he said, we do this, we do this. And every time we raise the bar, every time we raise the bar, every building we do, we raise the bar. And the way he said it, and you could look at him, everything about him was impeccable. There wasn't anything out of place. Not a hair was out of place. I didn't look so much. And every little tiny minute nail and screw was special. So this is what you do. If you want to get to the top, you have to be a little bit finer than the others. 
You have to just have an edge. If an edge means you need to learn another language, then you learn another language. If the edge means you have to learn how to walk, how to speak, how to dress, then that's what you do. And the point is that I know for sure you're never too old to do what you want to do. So I have to go, it's midnight. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And I will talk to you later. And see you guys tomorrow at 8 a.m. I don't know what tomorrow night is bringing. No, you are talking my kind of language. <laughs> what is that? Hungry like a lion. No, but if you want to be successful, you have to be fine. You have to be fine. Everything has to be fine. If you notice you're doing something and you're not using emotion, then go find it. Go buy it. Get a dose of emotion somewhere and use it. Dig for it. Scream. Shout. And bring it out. Scream, shout, and bring it out. Good night. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later. Thanks for coming, Susie and everybody and Nikki. We are not done with you yet. Yes, you are. <laughs> Good night. As much as I care and love each and every one of you, I am done. Do you want to see what I'm wearing? Really? You think I can keep standing in those? I don't wear those every day anymore. So it's time to take them down. Nighty night. Take care. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here tonight, each and every one of you.